So um, the idea that it's all inside the head is nothing but an assumption. And I think it's a remarkable thing that our entire civilization has been bemused by this spell, this belief system, that it's all inside the brain, in, without a shred of evidence uh, for centuries. Um, and we are now teaching this to people all over the world. The school science lessons with the materialist flavor are the same in India, China, South America, Africa. Kids everywhere are learning what's called the scientific view, which I think is just wrong. I think children under 10 have got it much more right than we have. And of course, children like seeing it that way. And that's why children's stories um, presuppose influences from the eye. Superman comics often show rays going out of his eyes. Roald Dahl's story, Matilda, has Matilda being able to move things with her eye beams. Children love this. It fits with the way they think. <clears throat> well, I'm not putting this forward as a philosophy. I'm putting it forward as a scientific hypothesis, and that means it should be testable. Can you test it? If my mind reaches out to touch you when I look at you, then I may be affected. I may be that I'll affect you just by looking at you. And of course, if you see me looking at you, then that's ordinary psychology and nothing surprising. What if I'm behind you and you don't know I'm there and I stare at your back? Could you feel it? Now, as soon as you ask that question, you see this is a very common experience. The feeling of being stared at is extraordinarily common. Most people, including most children, have experienced it. Recent surveys have shown it's almost universal. There is a slight sex difference. More women than men have experienced being stared at, and more men than women have experienced staring at others and making them turn around. <laughs> <clears throat> But most of us are mere amateurs. And um, when I got interested in this subject, I thought, well, I'll talk to the professionals. So I, or my research assistant, called up people involved in surveillance. Um, there are people whose job it is to watch others for a living. We spoke to the store detectives in several London department stores. We spoke to the drug <coughs> squad at Heathrow Airport. We spoke to uh, police officers. Uh, and um, we spoke to private detectives. And one of the things we learned was that uh, when you're being trained to be a private detective, they said, all, the, all these people took it for granted. They all said, yes, of course. Uh, the private detectives were the most interesting because they told us about these training courses when you're training to be a private detective. I'm assuming most people here haven't been on a private detective training course. <laughs> so um, I'll let you into one of their secrets. Um, when you're being trained how to follow somebody, the first thing you learn is don't stare at their back. Because if you do, they're likely to turn around, catch your eye, and then your cover's blown. You have to look at them a little bit, otherwise you lose them. But you look at their feet. Um, so this is completely taken for granted by these practical people. In the British SAS, the special services, when they're being trained how to creep up behind people to stab them in the back, um, uh, they're told, don't stare at their back, because they'll feel you coming and shoot you first. Um, and in the martial arts, this is taken for granted. And uh, many martial arts uh, traditions have a way of um, training people to increase their sensitivity to being looked at from behind. If you can feel somebody looking at you from behind and approaching you to attack you, you're more likely to escape than if you can't feel it. This is useful. It's not just a curiosity. It's a very useful thing to be able to feel. And you can increase your sensitivity. They train people. 